Yep. Everything wonderful. I'm just double checking with chat to make sure they're happy. Fixed yep. and poggers. Oh, superb. Everybody's happy. Hi, Jonathan. He's still uh, in New Zealand, guys. I've just double checked. Uh, he's <laughs> he's not left yet. Are you excited for this weekend? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's a bit scary because, you know, like the, uh, the crazy crunch uh, that goes on before we ever show anything, right? Like everyone suddenly realizes all the stuff they said was finished is actually not. Uh -oh. um, after all, when you actually tell them they're gonna, people are going to see it. It's not so, a uh, panic <laughs> again, is the I, I remember <laughs> sitting at the dinner the night before Exile Con at Christmas like, right. it's not ready. I can't believe this. <laughs> I'm going to have to drive back. <laughs> Can yep. we get a USB shipped over immediately? <sighs> <laughs> Uh, are we? Uh, I know you can't really sell us, but are we in for an exciting weekend? I assume so. Um, well, I hope so. Um, I mean, we're certainly very keen to um, get get some more people to try the game. There's been a lot of changes, uh, just a basic game feel, even since the last time uh, we showed anything. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really excited just to get you, get you know, get get various people to try it out, just see what they think of it now. Um, and uh, you know, we're also being showing off a class that we haven't showed off um, uh, uh, before. What is it? So uh, you know that, that that'll be good to have a look as well, um, and uh, you know a few other a few other things uh, as well in store. So yeah, I'm hoping you guys are going to be uh, pretty pretty interested in it. Uh, but the, the, but the thing I'm <laughs> right, but the, the thing I'm really most interested in is just uh, getting feedback on like the on, on kind of combat feel that we have uh, in this demo. Like as I said, things have changed even further since the last time, and um, um you know I just really want to kind of see like you know is it feeling where we where we want it to be? I mean I think it's pretty cool, uh -huh. uh, but uh, you know I'm keen to see what other people think as well. Okay, so we're looking at something a bit faster paced. Uh, like the last time I got to play was at Exile Con, which was the right. relatively slow gameplay that we got to see. Right, right. Show off the dodge roll and things um, like that. There are there, there are a few things going on with that. That I mean, okay, like it's not that I would say that things are faster paced as such. It's that there's just well, it's a bit hard to explain without kind of going into all the details. But effectively, um, there's been like. When we showed the mercenary, we showed off like WASD and move while shooting and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and effectively like more things have be, have happened since then based on the capabilities that we have, you know, now with doing that stuff and even going further, you know, like we're just kind of doing doing a lot more of that sort of stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, like. Uh, I mean, so we already teased the fact that we're showing off the Ranger, um, and um, obviously you can imagine that move while shooting can be uh, very applicable uh, to a class like the Ranger and kind of, you know, but, but yeah, as I said, just other changes. But, but it's also the other thing as well that I'm very keen to people to try is um, that people haven't had a, a chance yet to try what um, melee is like with WAS, WASD. Mm -hmm. And um, that's also something that um, you guys are going to be able to get a chance to try um, at the event. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see how you guys feel about that. Like, it actually is almost the case universally in the office now that almost everyone here is using WASD exclusively. Um, so, uh, you know, that's kind of one of those things that um, surprised us because we thought it would be really more applicable to the range stuff. Um, but it seems like that's become the preferred option. Interesting. Uh, and, and, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's kind of something that um, I, I was surprised about. And now that, and now that, we've, yeah, that we're doing that, it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's opened up a lot more sort of action avenues. And what the other, the other thing I sort of found interesting as well is that... Um, uh, all the stuff that where you might assume that it wouldn't tra like like where you do stuff to make stuff things feel good for WSD, mm. and then you go back to click to move and you think, oh, okay, this is going to feel terrible here. Um, it actually doesn't. Like surprisingly, a lot of the stuff that we've been doing feels great in click to move as well. Um, so uh, yeah, like it's kind of interesting how that ended up, and I I'm I'm really happy that we did WSD, even if only for the improvements that click to move is also getting at the same time. Right. Um, that just by the fact that you know, I don't think we would have tested a lot of the stuff that we ended up doing had we not done WSD. So you know, it's kind of interesting how that how that ended up. Do you expect, uh, from what you're seeing in the office, are you expecting people to utilize both depending on the situation, or are they um, kind of sticking to one or the other? They're, they're honestly sticking to WASD most of the time now, but um, you know the other thing we've been doing recently is we've been doing some um, first user experience tests. So that is to say, you know, we we've got like a um, you know people come in, they uh, you know under NDA of course, and they you know like they, they play for a couple of hours and so on and seeing what they do. And what we're trying to specifically do there is pick people that aren't necessarily the most hardcore gamers. Like this, the, the intention here is like you know you put just random guy off the street in front of the game. You know what kind of uh, what, what what are they able to understand what what happens and all that sort of stuff. And um, uh, they're actually tending to pick um, click to move when they're given the option at the start of the game, um, because I guess that um, they're kind of potentially just assume that it will be easier or whatever, something like that. And um, the ones who swap over to WSD tend to stay there. Um, so, uh, you know, the, in terms of selection, um, yeah, click to move is still the most popular option when given the, the choice of both. But um, the, uh, the, the, the people seem to be preferring WSD overall. 
Okay, and that's not just... That's even with your seasoned players. That's not just from muscle memory coming from other PC games where WSD is generally the standard. You're seeing that with well, people who've used Click to Move for years. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, so I think that one of the conditions that they had on, on when, when we were doing the first user experience testing was um, for, for the first round, because, you know, we've been doing... Um, uh, recent, so for the first round, what we wanted to do is test people who haven't played Path of Exile before, mm -hmm. but have played an action RPG before. Um, okay. So basically, just to see the idea of like, can they like, if, if you're coming from another action RPG, do you understand what you're doing when you come into PoE? And um, so that that was the kind of the selection criteria there. Um, and uh, so I, I, what I suspect is is the reason why a lot of those people are picking click to move um, uh, as their first option is because if they've played an action RPG before, that's kind of what they're expecting uh, the control scheme to be like. Um, so if we then change to, uh, if we do another selection later, I believe that there's going to be another test um, soon where it's going to be the selection criteria of never played any action RPGs before, but have played action games before um you know a different test and i'll be interesting to see if those people uh, pick uh, wasd instead um but uh you know like yeah, when, when you're doing these kinds of tests you do kind of really try and select like try to understand because understanding what type of players are playing informs a lot about um what you're seeing when you when you see them do things so it's good to sort of test those groups um a little bit uh independently yeah and of course at some point we'll, you know uh, we, we, we don't really need to do testing for people who played poe before because everyone in the office is those are those people yeah. so <laughs> you know, that makes uh, that there's, not, yeah, there's not really so much uh, need for that one i might give that a force then at the weekend like uh i didn't, never even considered it until you brought it up then but uh right. if we're playing on the weekend i might give that a try and like force to go to wasd and see if i can right. see how it feels like uh, compared to right, right. the usual gameplay because absolutely uh, i'd never even considered playing wasd Right, right, and you can just change back and forth. Um, so to just to just try it out. So um, yeah, I'd recommend that you that you give it a shot. Um, I certainly was skeptical before we did it, um, and I kind of was like, you know, I'm gonna agree that we should test this, but I'm kind of like I'm pretty uncertain about it. And then after we did it, I was like, wow, okay, yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason we should have done this years ago. I assume um, controller so support is uh, still there, right? As well, there's not. Of course, sure. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we? Is PoE two intending so this is a little one with consoles at the same time, or are we going PC only at the start? Um, we actually aren't talking about that yet, okay. um, unfortunately. So, um, but uh, I mean, look, uh, I, I do want Path of Exile 2 to be a big console game as well as a PC game. But I mean, ultimately, you know, like we're a PC studio, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like this, this is our roots. So PC is where our like mindset is, but console needs to be taken seriously. And um, so we now, one thing that is beneficial is that we do have dedicated console people now mm -hmm. uh, which we didn't in the past so that means that um that that i think will improve the console experience very significantly of what we had before yeah i mean it's such an opportune game for couch gaming uh which is was was exactly why i was asking that it's like and i was with it on the console for a bit uh and play in the <laughs> living room but uh, all right so that, let's get into some of the questions that i really was curious about because as i'm sure you're aware i came into poe i was part of that huge mob of people when it came out in 2013, that looked at it, was in the middle of some other gigant game, and was like, I'm going <laughs> to not play that. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like a WoW Raider hardcore at the time. I was building mm -hmm. my YouTube channel, and all my friends were like, hey, we're going to go play, play PoE after the raid. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to carry on working and do whatever. And then by the time mm -hmm. I was coming to play PoE, it had grown. It's this monolithic, gigantic mess where, not like, that people are like you need to go to school before you play <laughs> like there's there's you've if, if you heard of ziziran and let's there's a university guide of what's going on and it was it's so mm -hmm. daunting and so overwhelming but then i played and i was like this game is phenomenal like absolutely amazing uh but it, and you get sucked into it but poe 2 looks like it's going to be a fresh start uh and i don't mm -hmm. know i think you guys feel that same way again it's like we can we can learn from what we did in poe one and now we have a great opportunity to increase the accessibility not necessarily not in any way make it like a casual version i don't know what your version is but increase the accessibility so i wanted to ask right. you like having been there from the start been a founder you've watched the development of poe you've seen the mistakes you've seen the successes of poe one what are you bringing in in your mindset for the the roadmap for poe two in that regard so i think it is a i was actually so i i, I I was talking to uh, Mark yesterday, actually, quite a lot about this question about, like, you know, what is actually different? And one of the things we were discussing was, is, like, how much of the complexity is the amount of content versus how much of it is actual complexity of the game? So, the, I, I mean, Path of Exile is a complex game, don't get me wrong, but I do think that there's a degree to which a large amount of content 
can make the game also be perceived as more complex just because of the idea that you, you feel like as a player, okay, well, if I don't know about all these things, then I'm at a disadvantage and therefore that increases the amount of stuff that I have to know and therefore that increases the complexity, which is true. Mm -hmm. um, but then we were kind of discussing, like, I wonder how people would react if Path of Exile 1 came out today, having never been seen before. And like, what would that actually be? Like, how complex would the game be perceived as um, when you kind of don't have the... Because um, the, the theory that we had was, is okay, like, if, if you didn't have um, a giant group of people who have already effectively solved the game as it were mm -hmm. like then all of that knowledge doesn't become mandatory anymore because like everyone's kind of in the same boat so there's sort of an element of when a fresh game is released you've kind of got everyone's in the same boat we all have the ability to discover everything together and that can kind of potentially change the perception there like that being said i do think the base level of poe one is like definitely got more incidental complexity than it needs and i think probably the biggest thing around that is just the way skill gems work and we've already addressed that and i've talked extensively about that a lot um in other interviews and so on mm -hmm. so i think that is going to help a lot um but um the it is like um i do think there is an element there of just like the fact that you've got this like 10-year history of adding like if you're going to add something every three months for years and years and years and years there's just going to be a huge amount of stuff that builds up over that time uh, unless you start removing content which we also don't really love doing either mm -hmm. um so um yeah that that can just be that can just can lead to a sort of a this, this sort of situation so um yeah like i mean i guess what i would say is that like there's a few different things to do like one of them is yeah absolutely so we, i said before we're doing first time user experience testing making sure that like just the the impenetrability of some of the things that you get at the start of the game just is, is significantly improved and, and and the funny thing about that by the way is that when you look at the kind of things that people run into um they're not even the type of things that i think anyone would say are complex about poe yeah. like they're just random <laughs> things of like you know oh like i didn't like i missed the fact that you know like that this button existed then or that you know like that this is how you pick up items this way or like just a million other things like there's like there's a million tiny details like that that just add friction to the start of the game mm -hmm. and um so that's important to get out because like none of that stuff helps anyone right like if it's hard to understand how to do something but that d didn't contribute to depth in any way then there's no reason for that to be hard like all the stuff that doesn't contribute to the depth should be as easy as it can possibly be so then the only conflict would start to arise when you have um something where it's like we want to try to achieve some kind of gameplay goal and we don't want to simplify the system because it would make the game worse, but also people aren't understanding it. And that's where the conflict starts to, you know, starts to arise. Yeah. Um, and in, in that regard, my hope is, is that we don't have to sacrifice anything there. That's my hope anyway, but I guess, you know, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I mean, we will have to see how that goes. But at the same time, I think um, the combination of fresh start, much better first time user experience, and also... Um, when we are bringing content from POE 1 back, we try to be a little bit careful with how much of the kind of like crafting stuff comes along with it. Yeah. Um, because I think that's a lot of where the where that stuff kind of, you know, like people, people like you can add like a ton of extra bosses and it isn't going to like make the game more complicated, but it's all of the rewards that the bosses are giving you mm -hmm. that make the game more complicated because those are the things that, you know, the things you have to know about in order to make your character better. Well, I do know um, so when I opened the uh, help menu to learn what Harvest was, because I found it in a map, and right. I was like, what is this? Right. And I was like, well, right, I'll right. check the help menu. And I know the, when I was right. talking to the devs, they were like, oh, no. <laughs> right. This is like two years out of date. Uh-oh, right, 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 what are we yes. going to do? <laughs> mm -hmm. We do like, need to interrupt. There's a lot of stuff like that can just doesn't stress straight up be improved, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in that regard, then, um, what do you see in this progression path overall for PoE2, like in the, the first 12 months? Is it the aim to get PoE2 to have not as many systems, but enough crafting and variations to be on a similar par with PoE1? Or are you aiming to be a bit more gradual to enhance that new new player experience? Um, well, we do want to get content in um, as quickly as possible during the beta. And um, one of the things that is interesting about that is that once you have a blueprint for something and you don't need to do much design, it is so easy to get a team of people to just work on that because you don't have to do all the iteration, um, which means that if we're talking about re-adding, like, you know, for, for example, a league like Delve, yeah. um, you can effectively one-to-one -one replace, like, Oh. do a bit of extra design to make sure that everything's like modernized and so on but effectively like you've got the blueprint of what it is you're building right from the start and um that means that um it's significantly easier to um quickly put content like that in 
So during the beta, I would expect to see a lot of that content coming back. And as I said, it's a question of making sure that the design of all of the systems around it um, just don't go too overboard. Um, like, I don't want to lose any of the cute possibilities that exist for doing interesting crafting. Like, um, I personally love that stuff where there's like really interesting interaction between those things. Um, but at the same time, we do have to just make sure that we're not like going too overboard and, you know, and, and, and going too crazy there. Um, because, you know, that's effectively what the next 10 years of Power Creep are for. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Like, you know, <laughs> then we had to POE through. It's a fresh start <laughs> with yeah, POE three. Yeah. We're starting from scratch yeah. and seeing where we're going. Um, yeah. What is your kind of end game vision for PoE two? Is it any different than PoE one? Like, is um, is the focus? Do you think on letting the players do what they want if they want a currency farm for a whole season? That's something we're endorsing. Um, or are you being a bit more focused this time? Um, so I'm definitely a fan of having people having all sorts of different types of different end games to play. Like, I think it's really cool when you're like, oh, I want to like make, I, I need this type of item for my build. Therefore, I'm going to, um, you know, I, oh, I, 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 I now find out that this is the league I need to be doing in order to be able to get the piece of reward. Like, I actually like that stuff. And on some level, that actually is the complexity we were previously talking about. Yep. But I do think that it adds a lot of um, interest of like, you know, like it. It makes the player kind of like, oh, you know, here's another game mode that I haven't tried before that I never even played like the, the, the multiple times I played through the game in the past. Um, you know, like I want to try this out and, 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 and sort of see what this is about now. And I, I think that that provides a lot of the longevity that we have is um, those kinds of decisions. Mm -hmm. So like the, the, the important thing in Endgame is that you make sure there's some kind of economic gating into whatever element of the Endgame you're talking about so that you can't just go to the hardest content and then smash your face onto it and die. Um, like you do need to have some kind of way to prevent people from um, just trying the hardest content immediately. So you need that economic element. But so long as there is an economic element to uh, make sure that, that, you can, that you can go through in a piece of content, um, then um, I'm happy for people to do whatever kind of content that they want um, and to achieve whatever kind of goal that they want. You know, like that, that, that is a, a great thing about PoE, I think, and something we definitely wouldn't want to lose for PoE 2. No, I totally agree. And when, when I did play PoE 2, there was definite focus on bosses, especially to demonstrate the new right. combo abilities and right, right, right. the dodge rolls and stuff like that. Uh, which I'm super interested in seeing. But you mentioned earlier that you might see much more similar content to... Are you trying to, in many ways, utilize the things that definitely worked in PoE 1 and they're kind of going to be mainstays in PoE 2? So Delve has obviously been a feature for a very long time. So right. if you see it in PoE 1 it's overwhelmingly successful, it should definitely appear in PoE 2 as well. Is that like a sure. mantra? I mean, for sure, absolutely. Like, I mean, people will want to see that stuff, and so we want to make sure that we're doing it. And it isn't really that hard for us to bring things like that back. Mm -hmm. um, so, therefore, we should do it. Um, we just need to first get the giant uh, wall of content that we're making for PoE 2 during the campaign <laughs> sorted out, and then we'll be able to focus on that stuff. Um, but we still need to make sure that the end game has, like, when we first go into beta, still has enough to make it interesting. Um, so, uh, you know, like, because, you know, it would be terrible if we launched into the beta and people got the wrong un idea about what... Yeah in game is like so therefore we need to make sure there's enough content there to like to make that work um but uh yeah there certainly won't be as much as there will be later in the beta no that's great and uh because you are branching off right obviously you made the decision to split the games mm -hmm. um are you worried uh, is, is your eternal i guess amongst the teams is there any competitions like we could do a better league than you when we have the freedom and see who wins or uh, and you know um, which which one you know that internal competition could be very healthy is like well we've got this idea we've got that idea or, or is poe2 being like ah ha, ha we could take what you made and make it slightly better because we can <laughs> fix it a little bit um i guess i, I guess i don't really see that the, the internal situation being quite like that because um at the end of the day um, i mean mark's much more involved in poe1 than i am but like like it's not like we um it's not like there's a different person in charge of poe1 than there is in charge of poe2 really like we're still kind of like very much doing both games mm -hmm. and so it's really more about understanding the needs of both games and like and doing the kind of the right thing for them um i mean the big the big excitement of course being able to diverge is that ever since we made that decision we've been able to just like completely free our hands of all of the things that we would see as potential things holding us back um that um that if we were still in poe1 i think would have been problems um but and, and and the thing is we we also have to be careful like that we don't uh like we still need to make sure that peer we one feels like peer we one when we're making expansions for it like that's still important too um but then there is also this other question of like um that, that, that's that, that's honestly that the harder question i think actually is whenever we come up with something that's great for peer we two then the question always comes up should we be backporting this idea to poe1 right um, because like we all agree that it's better yeah and so therefore why wouldn't we improve poe1 in this regard and um, 
I think that over time more stuff like that will slip in. Um, uh, and like, I mean, it, it's easy for certain features and, and, and harder for others, but um, like that I think is the great attention of like the, 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 once you've worked on POE2 for a while and you're seeing how, you know, we can improve things if we're just willing to change certain things that we might've been unwilling to change in POE1. The real question is, well, why are we unwilling to change this in POE1? Well, I mean, um, you've got a real no, problem coming up here, Jonathan, is <laughs> we, you risk making them too similar right that's that's kind of what you're talking about is you're duplicating yourselves yeah 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 it it would be a concern but i like look i don't think they're ever truly going to be similar because the mostly because of the of the combat changes um like the combat changes we're doing in poe 2 couldn't happen in poe 1 due to like well they could but you'd effectively (laughs) have to redo they would effectively have to redo huge amounts of uh poe 1 um, I mean, look, ultimately, that's how we feature creeped into having a sequel, right? In the first place. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, we wish we could do this, but the game not. is like, not, <laughs> exactly. yeah. So, um, so therefore, um, it, it will never be the same. But then what we have to make sure of is that we're just embracing the differences that we do have, therefore, um, f- from POE1, making sure that we don't, like, create problems in POE1 um uh but because we're effectively trying to treat it too much like poe2 which we have to not Mm -hmm. you know so um yeah uh what i would hope though is that anything that players really love um uh we do find a way to bring back so i mean as an example of that um obviously i don't know what players are going to love yet but um we've talked previously about how we're planning on changing the way trade works in poe2 Mm -hmm. and um what i imagine might happen is that if that actually is seen as strictly better in poe2 then would have to start talking about you know how can this stuff happen in poe1 as well yeah um but i mean obviously that would have to happen after poe2 comes out so we can be sure that that's actually working um but um you know if there's going to be something that's just going to be like you know if people like oh i'd play poe1 except that it doesn't have this then i kind of we start to have to think you know start to think like you know we have to do something about that so um yeah, yeah that, that's that a question of identity yeah. right so i mean as right. you sit here now uh, knowing where poe2 is going and where poe1 is uh mm-hmm. and, uh, and labels are really tough but what would you say the identity difference is that your vision goes for from one to two i, I think that probably other people would have a different opinion of this than i do because from my perspective poe2 is the game i always wanted poe1 to be and it was only limitations that led us not to be able to do that. Um, but I think that a lot of... The thing is, the thing that um, a lot of people say, which, once again, I don't know that I would agree with, is, oh, Path of Exile 2 is slower paced and so on. And th- that isn't like... But the thing is, that isn't an intention. That's just a result of what happens when you make the combat good, if you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> the, 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 reason, the reason that POE 1 is as fast... Like, is, like, okay. So, moving while shooting is a great example, right? Like, the amount of time that you spend like the amount of attacks you like if you if you're like uh what do you call it stutter stepping yeah um with, with a bow character the amount of time you spend attacking like the, that is to say the number of attacks you do per second while stutter stepping may be the same in poe 2 as it is in poe 1 the difference is is that in poe 2 you have full uptime but, but you know like because you're because you're attacking while you're moving yeah. but in poe one you have to stop and start and stop and start so you have to make the attack time faster in poe one to be able to feel like you're able to actually hit stuff at the right tempo mm-hmm. but once you change uh like the, the the moving while shooting thing to be able to happen then suddenly that means that like you feel even though the attack time is technically slower um you feel like the number of attacks per second you're doing is the same and so like this is the thing where like it, that, that that's like part of what's going on there and um, then when you look at like other classes we had at ExileCon, for example, like um, I don't know what class you 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 played, I played all of them. There. Oh, you played all of them. Oh, oh I okay, did. Right. Yeah, and it was yeah, great, right. awesome. Like the combos on the right, sock right. was so good. <laughs> right, right. So the the, the the like it's interesting because each of them had their unique problems that led to the overall feeling of the game is too slow. So I mean, in the case of um, the, uh, t- uh, the 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 I believe we, were, we we had the two hand uh, warrior. I believe it was two hand, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Now one of the things that um, with that is that we did we have been taking pains to make sure that um, two hand versus one hand is actually different enough. And in POE one, I don't think they feel different enough. Um, and so um, like uh, what we did after ExileCon is we actually ended up. Um, uh, 
that is faster than what we had on that character. Yeah. But that character was also the slowest of the character of what those characters can be. Like it was the big two and mace is the slowest weapon type using the and like it was it was built for slow. Like it was all like you know like the the, the channeled slam and all that other stuff. Yeah, like, big crunching attacks is what it was. Yeah. It was big chunky stuff. So like. The, 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 if, 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 if slow is what you want, then that was exactly the thing to do it. And then on the Sork, the, everyone, the thing that everyone was concerned about was um, a stunning, right? And that was like yep. the thing that was a, a definite concern. So like that one we did address a little bit after um, as well. And like there's actually quite a lot more that's happened to stun um, – that I will be talking to you about um, on, on on the weekend. Oh, super. Uh, once we, uh, the, 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 that's happened because there's actually um, a lot of more interesting uh, stuff going on there. Now, but, coming away um, with homework here, Jonathan, for the weekend. Yeah. Got w <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. it's going to be a very busy time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's there's a lot more stuff going on there that, that, that sort of changed. But as I said, like I think each of the classes sort of had their own uh, like sort of in interesting problems in that regard. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I think the Huntress though. Um, didn't really have that kind of issue so i think if you played i that, you loved the huntress really yeah the right, entire right, right. huntress scenario was so yeah, quick yeah. and i felt bad because yeah, i yeah. streamed the marauder uh, the big two hand right. and was crushing i was like yeah, people yeah. walked away like god this is slow and then i went and played yeah, yeah, huntress yeah, yeah. So i was like huntress, no. exactly the huntress much faster <laughs> and that one was where it needed to be as far as the overall speed and, and how that worked um, and then when you, um, so then we also had, uh, what else did we have? Um, I guess we had Monk as well. Yes. And of course, Monk was at level one. Um, mm -hmm. So it was a little bit kind of a, of a different uh, situation. Like it has to be a little bit slower right at the very beginning. Um, but I think it still personally sort of felt okay. Um, I can't remember whether we changed speed after that point. No, I think we didn't. I think the, the, the attack speed was overall kind of fine. Um, the main thing, of course, that was going on there is we didn't have that many skills for the Monk and the progression. Um, and you probably didn't have enough time to really... Um, uh, to, 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 to really test it so in the um uh weekend you're going to have much more time to play um so uh, it'll be interesting to see uh when you kind of get you know a little bit further into the game just from 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 level one kind of how you feel about the overall speeds and, so and some decent gear because um, we tried to express yeah, after yeah. it's like we didn't have great gear and things like that you know to scale up with which was understandable like right, there was right. nothing wrong with it i had a great time like, right, right. especially well, huntress but, and sark were my favorite um yeah, yeah. but i know they was like trying to temper what people were seeing with like look right, this right. is very specific context they're giving us here yeah 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 for sure and of course the other thing as well is just anytime you're playing a demo where you're not starting from the beginning of the game you're going to have a lot more difficulty mm -hmm. with the skills because you just don't understand what the um like how they're really supposed to be used mm -hmm. and that's another one of those things that the whole first time user experience stuff is showing um is um the terribleness at, of in which we, the ways in which we describe how things how skills work <laughs> it, it can be a little rough let me tell you i found it out firsthand uh, yeah it needs needs to get better oh that's so, great um, but yeah, um, things like that your focus does seem to be very heavily on uh those new users uh because you do P poe has a built a wonderful diehard dedicated elites fandom right. uh who sit on a throne of being in the know uh very good right. and often uh, i guess on their behalf is they often come across and i, I had a, like an hour discussion with a lot of people who were waiting for the interview before mm -hmm. we started today and they feel a little not threatened but a, they they're happy to be part of that elite level uh right. and accessibility is a word that makes people terrified like are you going to dumb down the game are you going to make it very easy right, right. uh but what i'm getting from this is absolutely not like that's right. not what we want we just want to be able for a, a new player to come into poe and not to just look at it and go nope and turn it off like right, right. straight away and is that kind of you what know, you're coming from so you know it's very interesting <laughs> because when we were doing the first time user experience tests my app my huge fear that i had was that the feedback was going to be the game's too hard the game's too hard the game's too hard like all that sort of stuff and we would have and then we'd end up on a treadmill of of, of then we'd have a conflict of like oh, okay like do we have to start nerfing monster damage and nerfing mm -hmm. um you know like, like uh uh and, and 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 this and this kind of thing um and just before the first time user experience test, we doubled all the damage for the first four areas of the game. Oh like, no. <laughs> and made them stamp all over it. I want to get this to a point here where, um, you know, like we, 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 we have a, um, we, we make sure that we're going as hard as we possibly can here so that when, if we do pull it back, um, that we're not pulling it back from a point where we're already kind of like feeling like like we're, we're already here. So I wanted it to be like relatively hard. So I kind of, we, I got it to the point where I'm like, okay, this is hard for me, right? Like yes. I want this to actually be like a fun experience for me, right? That's what I want. And this, this is the starting point I need to have. And the thing that really surprised me when I actually looked at um, the footage and um, we got the results from uh, talking to the players was that they actually weren't complaining about difficulty. 
um, even though we made it that hard. And this was actually something that really surprised me. Now, they run into all sorts of issues that they perceived that made the game difficult. But the issues that they had were not really issues of the monsters being too hard. And um, I think... Um, uh, okay, so there was an issue where um, what the first, uh, sorry, the sec uh, second boss um, was too hard, and we tweaked that a little bit. And like, mm -hmm. you know, when you actually looked at it, it was like, yeah, this is probably too much. We took damage on a couple of abilities, um, but the overall, like, th there was not a complaint of like this game is too hard, and that actually gave, gives me so much confidence because I was so worried that in order to make the game accessible, that we would have to make the game easy. Yeah. Um, but then it's like, look at Elden Ring, right? Mm -hmm. um like that game is hugely popular it is by no means easy um you know you like speak for yourself <laughs> i walked through <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i didn't need 300 <laughs> tries on michaela that didn't happen <laughs> yeah, yeah. um and, and 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 it's fine and it still works so i, I think that um that, that really so long as we can erase all the difficulty we don't want which is to say people misunderstanding how things work or not you know not like as long as we get rid of all that difficulty um then we can keep the actual challenge of you know like the fact that the monsters hit hard and that you know like you, you have to be careful and you know when you're playing and so on so i think we can keep that part um and uh, i'm hoping that as we continue to do more testing in this um in this regard um that it will still be the same because you have run and, into that um, in the past right and there were some leagues in poe on where even hillock was destroying people and the complaints right. ran wild the thing the thing is is i think poe one at the start right now is trivial like i think it's way 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 too easy yeah, i think um, you've played and, it before um, though right what, what was that sorry you played it before right the, the start of that game <laughs> yes i i know <laughs> i do know that but, the same, but, but i've played poe 2 before as well and yet i was still able to balance that to the point where i found it like i was dying you know what i mean yeah, yeah. um and uh I, I i i think that um so okay so, so here's so here's a question right how hmm. many times should you die to hillock before you succeed um what, what should that number be I th it obviously depends on the class you choose, but I think right. if you could tune it so you don't die, but it's a tight battle, you've done a really good job because it's like you've overcome so the I first actually, boss. I actually disagree with that. Mm -hmm. And so one thing to note is in POE 2, we have checkpoints before each boss. Okay. So that, of course, changes the opinion a little bit, right? Because you don't have to run through the whole beach again. So the, the fact, making death, like, I actually think it's better to make death less expensive for the player, but make you expect to die more often. Because what I want you to do is die twice and then the third time you succeed and that way you'll have three things one of them is you'll know this is a game where you should die that you should like you know that, that you might have to spend a little bit of time working out the mechanics and concentrate a little bit on the boss and um the second uh, and so that way when you die later you don't feel bad because if the first time you die is like level 20 then you're conditioned at that point to be like this is not a game where i should be dying so therefore death feels bad whereas if you're like i died to the i died to hillock uh, well, in, our case, in POE 2, it's the, the Lumber Mill guy. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I can't remember his name. Lumber Mill guy. You know, you die to him, you resurrect immediately, you're back in the fight, um, you try again, and then maybe you kill him on the second time or maybe you kill him on the third time. To me, I think that's good. Um, like, I think that you've set the expectation correctly for what it's for what it's like. And if you think to all of the best action games you've played, surely when you play those bosses in, in just like pure, and like completely pure, I'm talking about like just like single player, pure mm -hmm. action games. In a game like that, you'd expect to die a couple of times on a boss before you beat it, I assume, right? I would assume for boss two, yes. Um, boss yeah, boss yeah. one that's teaching you boss mechanics and how they kind of work sure. differently. I'm kind oh, sure, of, I'm sure. okay with a tough fight where you're probably going to use all your healing potions, but right, right. at that point he's probably nearly dead or you're going to kill him. And he may, mm -hmm. he may clip you and kill you, but for the most part. Right, right. But what I would also say to that is what... One of the issues I ran into in the early days of PoE is I don't know why I died. Now, Hillock's a poor example right, of this because yeah. he has like yeah, yeah. barely any attacks. But later sure. on, there's so much going on yeah. that I was like, I don't know where I went wrong here. Is Was it my chaos yeah. resistance? Oh, what was it? And is PoE 2 addressing that in some way? Well, visual clarity is super important. Um, I think when people, a lot of people say, why did I die? A lot of the time they focus immediately on there should be some kind of death recap screen, mm -hmm. which is something that I am interested in doing, even if I don't have time to do it right now. <laughs> um, but I think even just the clarity of the actual attacks is um, more important. And so um, I think if you look at modern POE boss design, um, we're doing, even just in POE 1, we're doing much better with regard to visual clarity than, I mean, okay, of the bosses, of course, the players are still yeah. just like stomping over everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, Many auras um, are happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, we're doing a lot better overall with visual clarity uh, in, in total. So um, the intention is to make that a lot better. But there's also a lot of subtle UX tweaks that can just make things um, different. And once again, I hope that when you, um, on the weekend, that, uh, when, you, when you're playing, that you won't have that feeling when you play anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that that will be um, 
Uh, that's definitely that's that, that's definitely something that I care a lot about for sure. That you need to know why you died. Um, and uh, I mean, even something as simple as when you get poisoned, your health orb turns green. Like we did that like a week ago, and I was immediately like, "Wow, that makes such a huge difference!" Like yeah. it's funny, just that little tweak, and it's like immediately everything is so much better. You know, like having it so that when you get shocked, that that is more obvious. Having it so that when you're bleeding, that is more obvious. Like these kinds of things, like can immediately improve. Like just making the the clarity in the moment better. Um, yeah, it's just certainly a can. Improvement, so. I would certainly yeah, love yeah. to see um, what type of damage killed me, because I often find in POE right, right. that's the case. So yes, I'm poisoned, but for all I know, that poison right, is right. ticking for one. And I might walk away with the knowledge of I died to poison, I think. Uh, you know, right, right. I mean, in fact, no, it was just that you got right. overwhelmed by something else sure, sure, sure. that happened, yeah. uh, which is why I like death logs. It's like, where did I go? Yeah, if yeah. I'm studying, I, my next plan with POE is to do the Ubers because I haven't done them right, yet right. and I don't know what they do. Okay. Uh, and I know that they probably have a ton of different damage types and they're likely to be full of mechanics going on. So what was right. it that got me? And it might right. visually look like a, something hit right, me. Right, right. But in fact, that didn't really do anything, uh, and it's right, right. this other thing. That's that's the bit I'm curious about. So what you're so what you're talking about there though is even just a problem in itself, right? Because like, um, just the fact that you're like visually this thing hit me, and I thought that was the thing that did the damage. Mm -hmm. That's already a problem in my opinion. Like the size of the effect, the intensity of the effect, like all of these things are part of the communication. Like the color of it, obviously, very important for determining the damage type. Like mm -hmm. we're being very stringent about making sure that we are very coherent with regards to make you know like with all of that stuff. Like the the if you know like if something's going to do chaos damage it needs to look purple like this yeah. kind of stuff you know like, like really yeah, yeah. making sure that like, we're doing all of those things exactly right. chaos yeah you're not going to yeah, make yeah, a yeah. fire orb that's purple because that's just right right so that, that, that kind of thing that kind of thing is really super important and as i said i do think that um that a death log can be a thing that we'll do and i do feel like eventually we probably will do it um maybe not at the start of beta but it feels like the kind of thing we would do but i also feel like if you have these kinds of problems it's easy to jump to well a death log would have solved it because it would have mm -hmm. but i would rather even solve it before that point where like while you're playing you just sort of know this without even realizing that you knew it because it just like appears that way mm -hmm. um due to all of the the various visual cues that we're that you see um right. And so I think the, the the kind of testing that I'd love to do that we haven't done yet is um, get players to play a boss fight, die, and then have me sitting there and be like, okay, why did you think you died? Oh, I would love and then that. Making sure that the answer to that, making sure that the answer to that that they said is consistent with what the uh, with what the what, what, with what I think happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, so that that kind of thing. Um, is pretty interesting but then the other thing as well okay so another thing once again that came up in first user experience testing was uh, immediately as soon as we did it was uh, people who haven't played the game before don't realize they're on low life um and like that kind of stuff so there's immediately like you you, you start to get into all the subtle things like you add the little subtle like breathing of the character you add like a little heartbeat that comes in as you get really low mm -hmm. you add the like slight little like amount amount of like um redness from the sides of the screen like you and you and you do like a bunch of little changes and then all when you get to the end of that and players may not even notice that anything changed, but yet suddenly they're using flasks when they weren't before. Yep. Um, so uh, that kind of thing can really, you know, once again, it's just all that little, those little details and concentrating on that stuff um, again um, is, is certainly, you know, yeah, something we haven't done for a very long time in we one honestly. No, I mean, um, I, I can see where you're coming from there because a seasoned player would be like, well, I always see my health bar, but if you're new to the right, game right. fighting a new boss, you're laser focused on the center of your screen right. and nothing else. Like that health orb sure. might as well be on a different monitor for all it matters. Uh, for sure well I, you know i got my wife to play um who uh she did technically pay poe one a long time ago uh for like a few hours but she's not she's not a gamer right she no. doesn't um she doesn't but she's lovely though sit down and, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. yeah <laughs> um, but i got it i got her to sit down and play uh, the game just as a, to, to get the experience of like what a like a non-gamer just sitting down and trying and the, 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 that was certainly the test that opened my eyes as to the visibility of the fact that you're dying like she would be um funnily enough she was dodge rolling really well yeah. um the uh, the attacks i was kind of impressed by that um because um uh, once again one of the other things we did just before uh, we did the first time user experience testing was we uh made the um the first boss's attacks track you more to make it actually harder to get the window uh, you're to do the so dodge mean like let's like, just boost again, the damage again, and this <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because we uh like uh, so, so um trev um one of our other developers he was like oh man this is so harsh for first time users now it's like really bad and I, and I was actually like, well, I actually want to see that. I want to see what a complete newbie 
doesn't respond to it. And she actually was dodging that really well. I don't think the dexterity required to dodge those attacks was actually that um, that much of a problem. So it's good that that's the harder element. But what she completely missed was the fact that she was walking around on five percent life for like twenty five <laughs> seconds without using a flask. Were you losing um, your mind? And, to you like Prue's no, gone. I just, I just have to be quiet, right? I have to just sit there and say nothing. Uh, you know, <laughs> I must backseat this. Um, it's killing me. <laughs> exactly. Um, and you know, like that really is an an eye-opening experience to see um to see that kind of stuff so um yeah like the difficult part shouldn't be knowing that you're low on life right yep like that 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 is not what should be difficult and yet that is what's difficult but yet when you die when you didn't know that what you think is oh this attack one hit me right and it's like well it didn't one hit you you're actually on five percent <laughs> life and you didn't know it <laughs> i got one um, shot no. no yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah oh i like um, that attitude that's pretty fun yeah yeah uh, that's good yeah. but i mean your, your combat focus and your passion for the combat is pretty clear uh i'm kind of curious like for, obviously this is a little bit selfish for what's going on this weekend is where are you lying in the thing that you've leaned on the most that you think you've, we've nailed this this is so good I mean, no you can't I, say I, everything I, jonathan because that's just smoke to, to me the thing that i'm the most proud of is boss design stuff i just think that our bosses are really really excellent like mark is so good at doing that stuff um like they're just so cool they're they're so unique like lots of i mean you know even when they're not unique they still feel like just the a really great execution of certain concepts and so I, i'm really like i think people are just going to have a blast fighting those bosses like they're just they're just they're so cool mm -hmm. um so that that's where i'm that, that that's where i'm at and um i i I, I do think that Pee Wee One has had this kind of boss design for a long time now. It's just all of it's in the end game. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. so effectively, like new players don't get to experience what our boss design is like at the start of the game. And if, if now that they will be able to do that, I think that that will just be a huge thing um, for for all those people who sort of get to experience like what the good boss design is like when you get it at low levels. So, is part um, of your plan for game to have a more linear boss progression? Uh, that's uh, no, no, very uh, clear I mean, focus. The, uh, no, no, it's it's not going to be it's not going to be linear. No, um, mm -hmm. it, 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 I mean, look, th th there's a lot of similar stuff going on in the end game as to what there is in the end game in Pee Wee One. Ideally, more clear, and it should feel like it's different, but um, still doing, you know, like the the fundamental. It's still maps at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? Like it still has well, that. It's the bread and butter, going. and it's going, and it's yeah, it's right, right, yeah, Pandora's for sure. box for sure, for sure, for sure. So um, yeah, we've still got that, but um, yeah, it, it's I, honestly, I just I really the, the the bosses are so cool, and that's what I. I think that's going to be our kind of like a, th a thing that people just really love. And we've got lots and lots of them as well. Um, you know, we've already said we've got a hundred bosses. Um, so, uh, you know, like it's, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Uh, okay. Uh, and I want to move mm -hmm. on a little bit, coming back to this new player experience as well is um, mm -hmm. surprisingly POE one for a new player at the end game of trying out the builds. You have an infinite amount mm -hmm. of builds that you can make in that game could feel sure. a little inflexible. Uh, mm -hmm. And people often lean to like, it's actually easier to re-roll than collect like all the right. items of regret you would need to try out. Uh, you have mm -hmm. mentioned maybe a gold uh, respec. We have, yes. the future. So I'm just wondering where your mindset is now. Uh, and the overall thoughts that you have, Jonathan, about the ability to be fle as flex flexible in the end game. I will point out that a lot of the, right. the older PoE players before we started talking today mentioned the word you should punish for, for, for specking wrong. Uh, you know, that kind of that feeling was flying around or whether or not it should right. be quite on the fly to mess around with the different well, builds. So I definitely think you need to have an element of feeling like your character is your character. And mm -hmm. if you just have complete free spec... Um, that just loses it because your character is literally identical to anyone else except for what you happen to be using right now. But there's so many things about the, like, when you actually look at, like, okay, so we, we I, I was talking to Mark about, like, recently about, like, okay, if you are level, say, 60 and you decide that you want to change your character, what does it take in POE 1 right now to change your build? And there's lots of little details about it that are very annoying that might not like you may think oh it's the respecking of the tree that's the big thing but there's actually quite a lot more going on a lot of which of, a lot of that friction has been reduced so for one thing you need to level up your skills now in poe 2 you can get pre-leveled skill gems because you, uncut gems will turn into a leveled gem of the level that you of, of the level that the uncut gem is mm -hmm. so changing your skills over for the levels is not so much of a problem the other thing you need to do is get gear that had the right socket colors for what you needed now in POE 2, because the sockets are separate from the gear, that's no longer an issue anymore. So the gear you have may still work um, for what you're changing to. And if and to the extent that it doesn't work, it will only be certain mods that you would obviously want to change. So that, but that's going to be easier of a problem to resolve. 
Um, so that problem is also reduced significantly. Now, then there is the whole regret orb thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we've changed that so um, it's using gold now, which means you've got... Um, obviously there's the balance of how much gold does it require and how much time would it take you to do that and so on, which we need to get right. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to claim that we've got the balance of that correct right now because honestly, we're not in a balanced position yet to really determine that properly. But um, it is intended to be at level 60, not too bad, right? By the time you're talking like level 90, then it should be very hard um, to respec. But if you're talking level 60, you know, like sort of early end game, like what, maybe 70 even, you know, it shouldn't be so bad. Um, you know, like, like, and so on. Um, and then there's just other, I mean, like, I'm trying to think of like, what, what are some of the other factors, right? There's like quite a lot of these things and all of these things kind of have led to a situation where the, 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 okay, even something as, uh, as simple as like, you have to get a bunch of GCPs to, sorry, that's gem cutters, uh, to increase the quality of your items, like things like that. Like the way that all of that stuff is presented and defined now is all subtly different in certain ways that make it so that overall the process of changing isn't going to be nearly as bad. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's even more subtle things as well, which is that because the expectation, well, not necessarily the expectation, but the, the, there is a, the rewards for using a different skill set well are higher now than they were before. So what I mean by that is, is that doing a combo correctly, mm -hmm. um, even in the absence of gear that supports it, the, okay, you still need gear to support all that stuff for sure. Like we're a loot game, that's not that isn't changing. But like, if you pull off um, a combo well with just like um, the right skill set, um, that can still lead to um, very good rewards. Which means that like you can change build, not be as powerful, make a few more changes, like earn a little bit more stuff, and that is a, a thing that is more possible to do. Right. Um, and I think that there's a bit of subtlety around this. It's a little bit hard to explain in the absence of actually trying it, mm -hmm. but like the, there's a, yeah, it's like the, the fact that you're intended to use more skills anyway and like, you know, combine stuff a little bit more across the different archetypes kind of means that um, uh, the, 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 you can change build from a bad build to a good build. And even if you didn't change your items, you should still be doing better than if you like the, 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 even you know the, the, without having to actually do all these other things so I'm not, I'm not explaining that very well but effectively it, I, I think we could be a bit more vague on this because my yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah it's more a case of i'm a new player and yeah, yeah. i like this skill at level 20 like early days so mm -hmm. i kind of stick yeah, with yeah. it for a while right and uh, more skills yeah. open up later on uh, yeah. But I don't know. Let's say I'm a big two-hander, and it's kind of slow, and I'm not really digging it. Mm -hmm. I wonder what sword and board is like, uh, and so right, I right. want to respec a little bit and try it out. But I check it. I don't particularly like it. Now I need to go back, or maybe I want to try out a bleed build, you know, just to get a feel for right. how these things work. Well, and that's level, where it can be a little off-putting. At level twenty, that will be very easy. Yeah, I'm talking like I stuck with it for a yeah, while. Yeah. So now I'm sixty, yeah, yeah. And maybe seventy. Oh, yeah. and now I'm like, yeah, eh, yeah. it's not really working out as I liked it. I'm right, not right, going right, to try. Right. And then my friend tells me, "Have you tried this? Yeah. Have you tried that?" And I'm like, "No." Right, right, right. Um, you well, got to respect a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and and 100 percent in we one, it is that is a, a, a definite like it is hard to respect. And as mm -hmm. I said, like it is really just it's a combination of like twenty little things, all of which are getting some attention. And I think that the overall result of that is going to be a much easier experience, even while still maintaining the fact that you still have character identity. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's kind of where I'm coming from there. Um, so um, that that's at least my hope, right? Um, but I'll be interested to see, like you know, when you actually. Um, that's obviously not something you're going to be able to experience on the weekend because, like, you know, there, there won't be enough game time to really no, know whether I, or not I appreciate that. that's going to happen. But um, <clears throat> my hope is that, like, I, I do agree that, that that is a concern. Like, I want to make sure that people do feel like they're able to change what they're doing, but I also just want to make sure they don't feel like, oh, my character is just the same as any other. It needs to feel like there is a journey there to, the, when, when, the, the, and the later you do it, so, uh... the more of a journey that I guess this leads us then to the obvious one that's always a big topic in the community, and I don't even know where I sit on this, if I'm being honest with you, Jonathan, is like, mm -hmm. oh, it's actually better to just re-roll. Uh, and right. uh, that's your character that you made. Maybe you liked it, maybe you didn't, but you want to try something new. Re-roll your character mm -hmm. to do something else. And then we go back to doing the campaign, which has been a sticking point for a lot of people, is going through the campaign mm -hmm. again. And we've seen other games, you know, Last Epoch recently has come up with ways of bypassing it if you've already capped a character, or leveled a character at a certain point. Uh, but with your intentions with poe2 is that something you're going to divert from or is it something you think fits the mold really well to learn the character as you go i've just never liked it in games when you can skip the campaign i've just i just never have and it's going to be really really like okay i'm usually pretty open about changing many things like mm -hmm. um 
if, if, if people really have a problem with something, I usually are kind of kind of are going to be of their mindset that we need to find a solution for this, even if it's not necessarily exactly what the community thought they were asking for. I do need to find some kind of solution. Um, but it's like it's really, really hard for me to get behind the idea that you should be able to skip the campaign. Mm -hmm. It's really, really hard. Um, and um, it can be a, it, the, the trouble also, I think, that, and the reason why it's such a hard discussion is because the reasons that the, that um, someone who wants this feature to the reasons I give for why I don't like that sound weak. They just they sound really weak to them. And I can understand that. Like, I absolutely understand the perspective that they have. But this is just a really hard one for me to get past. Like, I, f I find it very, very difficult to, um, um, to, to, to be of the mindset that it's okay to just skip the campaign on the character. It just feels really wrong to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so, yeah, I, it, it can be very unsatisfying, right, but to, to answer that way, because it's kind of very much like a... Well, a, it, again, a, I don't know where I land on it uh, at yeah, all, yeah, because right, right, right. in the one hand, the campaign is a great place to try out different things because right. like you said respecking all that kind of stuff you can do in those early right. levels is very very simple right. Right. and you're in a right. kind of safe place it's not as hard as what you're going to right. find at the end game but on the other hand i made a build i'm trying this game out for the first time i want to change yep. it around and actually the solution is to start again and i just did that and of course long-term plays with a repetitive right. nature of it so there's there is pros and cons right. to both sides and as any right. other solution or do you even really see it as a problem or it's just a case of the people asking for this it's just not happening I mean, I don't want to ever completely rule anything out because yeah, I'm always never prepared never. To, to never say never, right? Never but at the same never. time, it will probably be a pretty cold day in hell. Look, that's that's probably that's true. A, that, I mean, that feels very definitive, <laughs> yeah. if I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm not no. saying that never, but on my corpse will that happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably too far. It's probably too far. Um, but uh, yeah, the... <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it, it, it's one of those things that i do have to look I, I the very fact that it keeps on coming up means that it will just keep on getting discussed and look mm -hmm. there may come a time when i understand like a way that i can become satisfied with to still achieve all of the goals that we have here but um it's certainly not just going to be oh you just skip straight to end game once you've done it once like that is certainly that will, that will never happen right like there needs to be some level of something going on uh for it to be acceptable um oh. i will say that in the league a second character now will have a much easier time uh then i mean it's true in poe one as well i guess but um uh, well it has a much easier time because you know you've uh so, so so one thing actually because there's gold and because the gold scales up as you get towards the end um yeah. buying stuff from the shop at early levels um once you've played a character through to end game is going to give you a very significantly faster experience when you're um once you've got gold in the league um plus the fact that you've got uncut gems um that um that pre-level skills like you can you, you, and you've got to have a bunch of them like you can you can make your experience significantly faster within a league once you've played through the league once no that sounds like a good solution you're essentially saying look we're not right. skipping the campaign but we're going to make it significantly easier right. to turbo through it right. as fast as possible right but that but that is certainly not the case between leagues right like when you go to the next league you're still starting from the same yeah, place yeah. everyone else is and i see that i see that as extremely important um so uh yeah, that's yeah. That, I have that, a, that, that, a question probably no one cares about but me. Uh, sure. But uh, it's actually the story delivery of PUE. Because mm -hmm. I felt really bad. As somebody who loves story and lore mm -hmm. uh, of video games in general, I love the medium of it. In PUE yep. 1, you had some extraordinarily good voice actors. Uh, but mm -hmm. you have this... It's almost a Hippocratic uh, hip hypocrisy. Is that you have an ultra-fast game uh, that's by the time you get to the mid-levels, you're kind of blasting. And, and, and then ultra-slow conversations. And then conversations that have you in town yeah. for like 10 minutes. And you're like, this yeah, yeah. is so conflicting. But I want yeah, yeah. to hear it. But at this point, I'm right, like, right, oh, right. dude, I need to get out of here. I, I actually agree with this. And this is something um, that I also am worried um, that we need to... Um, uh, that we might need to make more severe changes to um, than I was hoping. So that this did come up in first time user experience testing again recently where people um, didn't understand what was going on. And um, that's a big problem. Like we've, we're trying to do better, but I don't think we've quite succeeded yet. And I think we still need to do more. Um, Yeah, I, I have in my mind that we might need to go and change significantly the way conversations even are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we certainly haven't done that yet. And we're getting, um, you know, very close to beta. And I worry that it might be something that we need to change during beta even. Yep. Um, 
because right now the conversation system in Peewee 2 is the same as it is in Peewee 1. Right. And um, I think I think it isn't good enough um, and it needs to improve. Um, yeah, I know for me, I had no idea who Katava was by the time I got there. I was like, I don't know. What, right, right, right. But I tried um, I mean, really hard. <laughs> Pee Peewee 2 is better for sure in this regard. Like we did a lot to improve things, but I think that we still haven't done enough and we still need to do more. Mm. And um, the thing that is really annoying about this is that we've already recorded so much dialogue. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and those voice actors have been given the tone. Yeah, like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, hmm, okay, like, uh, we might have a, we, this, this, is going to, this is going to suck if we have to change some stuff yeah, around yeah. this. But I do worry that um, it's, it's, it isn't good enough and that we, and that we might need to do better. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess, um, obviously, I don't have anything to say. Like, here's how we're changing it to at this point, because I'm still in the, like, I think we're still not doing well enough phase. Uh, Are we going to see it in the weekend? And maybe we can sort of get a Oh, I mean, you'll, you'll see what we have. But yeah, yeah. Um, what, as I said, what, what, what you'll see is, um, I mean, okay, other than the fact that we've improved a lot, there's a lot more dialogue from just, like, your character talking and the bosses and things that they say. It's like a lot of that incidental stuff in the game. And that will improve your understanding of the overall plot. Um, the conversation system with the NPCs is still just what it was before. And... Um, uh, so and and I think that I now recognize as of like a couple of weeks ago that we have a problem mm -hmm. um, and we need to improve it. So um, yeah, uh, that's something that um, you won't see improved on the weekend, but uh, hopefully you will uh, before t uh, before too much longer. No, I'm glad um, you're thinking about it because yeah. I know uh, for me it was like I really do want to know what's going on in this world that's being destroyed and the demons are running wild. But it it always feels so contradictory to be like I want to get back to town. I want to grab my skill books. I want to get the next skill gem. I want to do all that and long ago the vehicle was moving. yeah yeah and yeah. you're like okay <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, and it, for you sure. know it keeps going you're like, oh, come on man i want to get back out there but yeah. maybe but for sure go the background is uh, for sure we need, we need we need to do better here i, I agree yeah that, no that's fantastic uh, i guess for our final wrap-up here jonathan with you is um well like I, the one thing i want to know is like you've watched poe one and now you think poe two is the game you wanted to make originally so what is the right. biggest lesson you're taking from what you saw over those 10 years of PoE 1 that you're like, not in PoE 2? Like, what is the biggest takeaway from when you got to start fresh and you diverted away that you're like, this is the biggest difference I want to make? I think you're probably leaning towards combat, but uh, is there anything it really else is, in there? Uh, it, it really is the combat. Like, that's what it comes back to. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else that, like, really... The thing is, it's... I don't know that you can even sum it up as one big change it's the ten thousand little changes that like sum up to to a big deal and so that like that's a somewhat unsatisfying answer unfortunately but mm -hmm. I, I mean the, if you have to, the, the most satisfying one is just combat like making it good but even that when you look at it is like well what makes combat good it's like ten thousand little things mm -hmm. um so it's you know yeah it, it, and, I, and i guess that really is just a um how game development is and i think um it, it's even interesting to when you look at other games that i would consider to not be so good that when i look at what's wrong with them it's like you could take what they have and just know the right answer for like a thousand numbers yeah. and have a really excellent game if you know what i mean and mm -hmm. it's kind of shocking like if you knew exactly the right answers the fact that you could turn a terrible game into a great game in like a day <laughs> if you just happened if you had an if you, if you had a number oracle and just yeah. turned like a change a bunch of numbers and then suddenly the game is good you know what i mean like yeah. it's kind of scary to me that the, the way that the knife's edge that you're standing on as a game developer of like the difference between a good game and a bad game is just a few numbers in a spreadsheet you know like it's and you guys scary. live league by league right like it's you, <laughs> this happens this happens to you every like three or four months <laughs> you have right, to, right. You, the numbers come out sure. you're like people aren't happy there's not enough sure, for sure. okay change it by one percent oh my god it's too yeah. much uh going yeah, backwards yeah. and forwards and now you've got to do it twice so good luck with that <laughs> right right <laughs> but um yeah it's, it's just it's just all the little details that make the game unfortunately like it's just this, the grind of every tiny little thing um and uh so yeah that's that's game development <laughs> no that sounds fun I, i'm super excited for this weekend jonathan i want to thank you for this time that you've given us here awesome. uh, to talk about this uh, always wonderful to talk to you um and uh, i'll see you very very soon but uh Thank you very much. And everybody say very much. clap, clap from the team. Uh, hopefully we got uh, <laughs> some stuff out of that. Because I know we, we talk about things that maybe not the, you know, the, the 10,000 hour players play. But I want to be the 10,000 hour player. But <laughs> we'll get Fair there. Enough. Yeah, it Fair enough. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Yeah. Have a great day. And I'll Thank see you. you soon. Yeah, you too. See Bye. you soon. Bye.